Agricultural Bank of Namibia's Agri-Advisory Services Division offers training to farmers and bank clients in various farming enterprises in all 14 regions of Namibia through face-to-face -face sessions. The AgriLearn online platform will share production content on various agriculture farming enterprises to build the knowledge of farmers from all walks of life. Join us as we embark on this virtual journey towards sustainable farming as we zoom into the basics of crop and horticulture production. Good day farmers, my name is Heng Sai Sai. I'm the technical advisor for crops and poultry within AgriBank's Agri-Advisory Services Division. We are going to talk about crop establishment and management. So when one wants to become a crop farmer, you need to understand that crop is a broad umbrella term, which covers cereal production under agronomy, and then vegetable production under horticulture, and then you have viticulture, which deals with vine production, which has to do with uh, grape production, raisin production, and so forth. So in today's focus, we are only going to narrow it down to horticulture production, which is the growing of vegetables. So I'll start off by defining a vegetable as any crop or plant that you grow for you to only consume a certain part of it that is useful to you as an end user of the product. First and foremost, when you start crop production, there are certain key considerations that you need to have in mind. The first one, is to ensure that you select a site which is near your house for easy access and management. The second point to remember is always locate your operations next to a reliable water source because vegetables and crops need water on a daily basis. The third point when you are selecting this site that you are going to grow your, your vegetables on, ensure that it's a level surface that has good soil and then it should be an open site that, is a that has a lot of sunlight reaching the vegetables. Last but not least, try by all means to fence off that area of production to protect your crops against damage. Now that you have answered the location question, you have to move on to how big should your operation be, the size of your operations. So there are four considerations that you must always have in mind. The first one is to ask yourself this question. Are you going to produce for own consumption or are you going to, cons to produce for a market? So if it's for own consumption, go for a smaller size because it won't make economical sense to produce one hectare of tomatoes just for own consumption for a household of seven people. If you are going for a market, one hectare is ideal because you have to have continuous supply of the product to the people who are consum consuming that product. The second point is you have to look at how much time you have to look after your crops. Time is essential in crop production because these vegetables, they need you on a daily basis and you need to do management aspects every day. The third point is the type of crop you are going to grow. You need to understand that crops like onions, spinach have a, have a tendency of growing upwards, so they take less space in comparison to cubities such as butternuts, uh, pumpkins, watermelons that grow in a manner of scattering or spreading on the soil. Last but not least, a very crucial aspect to consider in terms of size of your operation is to make sure that how much water you have available during the dry season should address the needs of your garden. So if you want to grow vegetables on one hectare, take into consideration from the time it stops raining, April until November, do you have enough water for yourself, for own use at home, for your livestock, if you are a livestock farmer, for household chores, and last but not least, for you to irrigate one hectare. So you need to take into consideration these four aspects for you to be successful in your journey. Another key point is once you have established the size and you have the location, there are certain tools that become very essential. The digging fork. This is normally used in small scale operations just to loosen and prepare the soil. After loosening the soil with a digging fork, you use the metal rake. This is what you use to level the surface to ensure that if I'm to grow my crops, there should be even distribution of water all over the seed bed. So this is the tool that you use. Now, we come to the most important aspect of your production, the seeds. Now, when you have the seeds, this is where you are going to, to grow your own vegetables. And this seed packet, the information at the back of this seed packet is very crucial. It will tell you how to go about it and how to make it successful. So when you're about to grow vegetables, always refer to the information that is contained on the seed packet. 
First and foremost, understand the variety of that specific vegetable that you are growing. I have Swiss chard here, which is commonly known as spinach. The variety is Ford Hook Giant. And then at the back of this seed pack, there is very crucial information that each and every crop farmer must understand. The first and foremost is the sowing season, the time in which you are supposed to grow the crop. So for this variety, you can grow it during spring, you can grow it during summer, you can grow it, grow it during autumn and during winter. So this type of variety, you can grow it all year round. Apart from that is where to position your seed beds in which you are growing this specific uh, vegetable. It will tell you that under full sunlight, it will still grow. And under semi-shade, where you put a bit of shed net over it, will still be ideal for it. And then you come to the method in which you are supposed to propagate or grow the seeds. It will tell you that you can still grow the seeds in a tray or directly into the seed bed. It will not be a problem. And by a seed tray, this is one of the seed trays that you can use to grow this seed. You just fill it up with a growing medium, which is high grow mix. And then you, you, you bury the seeds in that high grow mix. After 10 to 14 days, there will be germination and emergency in the seed tray. Apart from that, it will tell you the spacing of each seed or each plant. First, it will tell you that for you to grow these seeds, at least or at most, your sowing depth must not exceed two centimeters when you are making the holes in the seed tray or in the soil. And then it will also tell you that between the rows, you must leave at least 60 centimeters. And then in, within each row, from the first plant to the second plant, always try by all means to ensure that you leave 20 centimeters. So there's the recommended spacing allows each plant more time to feed, to have access to water, nutrients, air, and sunlight, but if you squeeze the plants all together, you promote competition for air, water, sunlight, and nutrients, which is not ideal or optimum for growth. And then it will tell you that after sowing these seeds, try by all means to keep the seeds moist by irrigating your crops at least once a day. And then from that, it will tell you that if you do this 40 to 60 days later, you should start harvesting the spinach leaves for consumption. So that is the information that is contained at the back of this seed packet. One crucial aspect that we overlook as crop farmers is this measuring ruler at the end of the seed pack. So when you are growing your seeds and it's recommended that you sow the seeds at two centimeters, always do yourself a favor, have a stick and a marker pen. So you put the stick against the edge of the seed pack and then you measure where does the two centimeter mark reach and then you mark it out on the stick with a marker pen. So every time you are sowing the seeds, this becomes a very crucial stick. It's your sowing stick. So you take it and then you put it in the seed tray until you reach that two centimeter mark and then you remove it and then you put your seed and cover. So that way, at least to ensure that you are not sowing the seeds way too deep into the soil or into the seedbed. So that is quite crucial in crop production. After that, as a farmer, I need to know, these vegetables that I'm growing, they need to eat. How do they eat? They need to have access to certain essential elements. So for you to grow crops successfully, you need to understand that plants need certain elements in large quantities on a daily basis. And these large quantities are known as macronutrients. An example is nitrogen, which is responsible for the green color that your vegetables have, and it also promotes vegetative growth of the shoot. And then I will need phosphorus, which is normally good for establishing a good root system and general drought resistance for my crop. And then last but not least, I'll need potassium. Potassium is essential for flower and fruit formation on all the vegetables that have the ability to produce flowers and fruits. For example, green pepper, chili, tomatoes, uh, butternut, watermelon, and so forth. So these are elements that are needed on a daily basis. Apart from that, I need to know that they will also need small trace elements. These are micronutrients needed in smaller quantities just to perform a specific function. A good example of that would be iron, which is responsible for the formation of chlorophyll, which gives your vegetables this dark green color. And then you have magnesium, which helps in uh, the process of photosynthesis. It helps by trapping sunlight in the leaves to ensure that when the carbon dioxide from the roots mixes, 
with the sunlight, you produce oxygen and sugar. Apart from that, you need zinc. Zinc activates all the enzymes in your crops. So it just does that function of activating the enzymes. It tells the root system it's time to absorb water, it's time for the flower to start forming, it's time for the fruit to ripen and all these things. So that is just a general idea. So when you are fertilizing your area, there are so many ways you can do it. You can use first and foremost mineral fertilizers, which are synthesized or chemically produced in laboratories to meet the, the requirement needs of your crops. And then apart from that, you can use organic fertilizer such as cattle manure, sheep manure, chicken manure. But when you are using these elements, always try to remember that the fresh ones can harm your vegetables. So before you use them, allow them at least two months before you apply them in the soil and you work them in the soil. But here is the catch. Organic manure, they take a bit longer to release the nutrients. But inorganic or mineral fertilizers, as soon as they come into contact with water, they easily dissolve in water and then they release all the elements to the plant roots and then they are ready for absorption. Last but not least, when you are growing vegetables, it's essential to make sure that you need to know which type of vegetable you are growing. And by, by, by starting off, I define the vegetable as any crop that you grow for you to consume only a certain part of it. So we have five categories of vegetables. First and foremost, it's the leafy vegetables such as cabbage, lettuce, and spinach. These crops, you only grow them to harvest the leaves and consume the leaves. Then we have the bulbs. A good example is radish and onion. These are the crops that form a bulb at the base of the stem and store all the translocated starch at the base. And then after some time you harvest and consume only that round bulb structure at the end of the stem. Apart from these ones, we have the fruit vegetables. These are the crops that we grow for us to, to produce and harvest fruits from them. Tomatoes, green pepper, eggplant, watermelon, butternut, squash. These are your fruit vegetables. Then we do have the root vegetables. They translocate and store the sugar in their root systems. Good examples of these are potatoes, sweet potatoes, and carrots. And then last but not least, we have a very important group of vegetables, which always give us a pod containing seeds that have high volumes of protein. These crops are known as legumes, and examples are soybean, cowpeas, green beans, and general beans, and groundnuts. So these crops, they are the only group of crops that have the ability to take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into nitrates and release it back into the soil. So they fix nitrogen back into the soil. So in short, that is it about crop establishment and management. That's it for now. Join us next time for more valuable insights. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to avoid missing out on new content. Also, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram pages for more content.